Uh, hey! Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Asania Zoo. This is episode two, in fact, of our sandbox zoo where I am not restricted by the rules of franchise and I'm building a rich person's park is probably the best way of describing it. We're building it in the middle of the desert. We get to be as creative as we like. And today I'm going to try out a random idea I had of a predator and prey mixed habitat. Now I was looking around for some inspiration and I found some wonderful discourse online where people were telling everybody about how hard and it won't work and I thought ah we can do that so that's what we're doing today now my rambling aside as you watch our wonderful family of baboons in the background let's go 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 Today we are going to be focusing on a dual habitat, one for the African leopard and one for a mixture, a small mixed habitat of mainly African animals. We're going to start off just with a little bit of landscaping. We are essentially going to make a bit of a trench down the middle and in that trench will be a viewing tunnel, I guess we can call it. So we're going to get that in to start off with. And this is going to separate out the leopard enclosure and help us hide the way that we're going to prevent them eating each other, which is going to be a dry moat going through the middle. So we're dropping this down and just setting out some of the basic modeling or sculpture areas, as well as our path there for where our visitors are going to go. We're also going to, while we're here, knock in a little wet creek just for water. This is going to serve the herbivore side, so our mixed habitat, and then we'll also be making a similar one in the leopard habitat, and then we'll join them up at the end as well with some pipes. Now I'm not going to go too much into detail how we sculpted this, it's very much the normal affair of just dragging a brush around. However, we are just going to pay a little bit more attention to not going too deep, too big. We don't want something too extravagant. Now for the dry moat itself, we're going to make this out of concrete and it's going to be fairly simple, just having a nice flat edge that the leopard can't climb up and then a ramped edge just in case it does fall in and needs to get out. And then we're going to drop that into the ground and come down to the viewpoint of our standing guest here so that we can just raise that ground up to make sure that we cover it over. And the idea is that from this end, as you approach this habitat, it looks like the leopard and our mixed species are sharing the area together really actually as you'll see in the ending in the cinematics it turns out it worked out really well overall in that you can't really see the dry moat really at all now to emphasize the leopard a little bit more we're going to make a bit of a mound or like a little area at the end where we're going to have a nice big climbing tree in the hope that we're going to get the leopard to spend a bit more time in that tree and then you'll see it more with that done we're going to start modeling out our tunnel we're just going to open up some walls and make sure we've got some nice openings for some windows we're going to run through and pop some glass into those this really kind of highlights how I, why I need to plan out these areas because I had no idea what I was doing and it kind of shows at the end. Um, I'm going to give you a bit of a spoiler. I'm not as overjoyed about the effect and the result of this habitat as I normally am with these builds. It's okay. It's, it's not bad by any means, but it's also not how I imagined it. Uh, there was a point where I was going to completely redo it all. And then I thought, nope, we're going to press on. We have got Planet Coaster 2 coming out in a week or two. We don't really have time to rebuild everything. So I'm happy with it to a degree, but you'll see at the end, it's, it's probably not how I had it in my head. And I may go back and play about with it a little bit, ready for our final zoo tour. And my hope is eventually to get this zoo up on the workshop for you all to have a look yourselves. So making sure it looks good for that is kind of important. Now in the background there, we have knocked together a floor using the same old method I've been using a lot lately, which is limestone pole caps or limestone pillars, and just using the top of them buried into the floor with a bit of a darker color underneath to make a nice grout outline. Works really well, and it's a nice effect that I'm probably gonna keep using. Although I do wanna do some fancier tile floors at some point. After popping a roof on, we're going to run that all the way around and then we're going to drag out some of the earth from the leopard habitat just to build on top of our tunnel here. Now that is going to cause a little bit of a mess underneath and we are going to have to spend a little bit of time prodding and pushing and just taking away this land a little bit just to get it right, but it was definitely worth it. got to make sure on the opposite side as well so that we don't give our leopard a means of escape we're going to not have it overhang too much i'm going to put a bit of hot wire on here later on just to be sure but it's always worth just making sure we're not creating problems for ourselves down the road onto texturing you've seen me do this many times before but we're going to set our intensity to 20 percent and we're just going to run over and over with each different texture highlighting certain areas with lighter colors and using darker areas to create shadow 
It uh, works really well, especially in this map's palette where they tend to blend really well as well. With that preliminary texturing done, we're going to start rock work. Now, rock work forms a fairly large part of both these habitats. Again, because we're in a fairly arid and dry environment, even with our canopy above, we are not going to have that much planting, at least in terms of trees and big bushes. So the lower level grasses, the lower level bushes are really important for planting. But then rocks are also really important for getting an idea of dynamicism and motion within the habitat. Now, these rocks, these desert rocks work brilliantly as well in this map because the rock texture is almost identical, which means you can throw them into the ground like I'm doing here, create some really interesting patterns and then just use the rock texture to blend them in with their surroundings. And it takes away from that idea that they are just bunches of rocks pushed together and they look more like one fully formed item and if anything the rock work in these habitats is one of my favorites and uh, it's probably something now i reflect on it that i'm actually quite proud of and how it's turned out now we're also going to be using the rocks as a form of barrier as well so this is going to hide a way out for our animals but also it will create a bit of a barrier for our dry moat as you'll see later on once we've done that we're going to start decorating up our herbivore habitat now I started off putting together a African inspired fence using the African logs and it was getting a bit too repetitive because there's only about four of the non-painted variety and the painted variety are just the same models but with paint on them. So what I've done instead is I've made a ramshackle log fence to go around the outside of the habitat and then about halfway around it starts to fall apart and break down as it would. And then we've gone back with a slightly modified version of our baboon fence that we made last episode just to make a more solid barrier around the outside of the habitat. It also gives us the opportunity then further round to just put in these broken pieces of fence just to keep that contingency as we go. Now moving to the slightly higher areas, areas where you could potentially fall into the habitat, we're going to go a little bit more firmer and we're going to make these glass barriers and this is a very simple we're grabbing the wood that we've used for our fences i'm just going to slap some glass between it and that that's all we need to do now this isn't the main planting section i just needed a little bit of a break after all of that sculpting and all of that rock work so i thought i'd throw some planting down and drin grass is really the most valuable item in this entire build we've got some wonderful signature trees but we're going to keep them to the outer areas so that we don't block off that sight line from the very end but drin grass everywhere is kind of the name of the game moving over to the leopard side now we're going to need something slightly more impervious to giant cat teeth and claws than a wire barrier so we're going to make a couple of viewing parts to start off with and these are just made using the light fixtures, the African light fixtures, rotated round to create a nice geometric pattern. And then we're gonna submerge a pane of glass in there. And these are our little view holes, which we will scatter around the outside perimeter of the leopard's habitat. And you can see there for once in my building time, I'm actually using the guest measuring stick or our angry little peeps as we've got them down there, just to make sure that we're getting the right sort of scale. Now with those done, before we finalize up on the outer barrier, we're going to place down a concrete slab for our backstage area. And again, we're going to keep this fairly simple. I am later on, as we move further into the more rainforesty area of the zoo, going to go down more elaborate and sort of colonial style buildings, sort of a exploration camp and a safari. But for now, we're going to keep it nice and simple, nice and Africanized with just a very basic building that I took inspiration from somewhere in Kenya from, which was just this wonderful, I think it's probably concrete. If not concrete, it's going to be some form of plaster building. And then it just has these wooden supports molded into the walls and we're going to make our own version of it. Then for the rest of the perimeter, we're going to use a mixture of our viewpoints and then some plaster walls just to give a nice high barricade. Now you may notice at the start of the video, I have not yet begged for your like or your subscription. And I do that because I feel like I should give you something first so you could know if you're going to enjoy my channel, my content and everything we do. So it's in the middle of the video where I'm now going to ask if you have enjoyed the video, please make sure you tippy tap that like button. And if you're not subscribed and would like to see more, then ensure that you subscribe. If you'd like to get notifications when new videos come out, then make sure to tick the notifications button. And outside of all of that, if you'd rather just put a comment down below telling me how awful or brilliant this is that also helps as well everything's appreciated and i'm really happy for those of you that have chosen to join me on this wonderful journey now in the center here we're going to use one of these wonderful mapinga trees i believe they're called i love them 
And I was going to build a faux tree using the faux tree pieces, but then I realized this tree is nice, it's big, it's got that wonderful uh, arm coming off of it for the leopard to hang out on. It just works. That's our feature tree. Just to make sure that we hit our climbing requirement, however, we are going to bring in a couple of acacia trees. And we're going to have these just overhanging the little stream we've made for the leopard, just so it doesn't always have to be frontline and visual. Now on the centerpiece, we're not going to get any animals over here, so we can go pretty mad with the planting. So we're going to start off with a layer of mixture of dry, parched and healthy buffalo grass, just to add a colour. And then we're going to go in with some thicker greenery. And we're going to use this to cover over a couple of the holes uh, that we've got around our rockwork. But the idea is, again, much like with the smaller lower down habitat, we want to keep these to the side so that they're not blocking off your view right all the way through into the leopard's habitat. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're not going to go too heavy with the really high bushes and the really high trees, but the lower level stuff we're going to go crazy with. This area wouldn't be cut or mowed very often. It's going to just be left to grow wild. And uh, yeah, I like how it turns out. Just to add a little bit of colour and detailing to our streams and our riverbeds, we're going to come back in with that coastal pig face, the wonderful dark green shrubbery that this gives us. We're also going to make sure that all of our creeks are sufficiently stony enough. And that's just going around and placing a couple of the faux rocks in a couple of different colours just to emphasise them. Now with the outer areas done, we're going to jump on inside and do some backstages. You've seen me build backstages now almost every episode since I started doing videos. And this is no different. We are going to build ourselves a metal frame. We're going to clad it in some mesh. That's going to be our backstage. Now, while I do that in the background, I have made a couple of tweaks and it's probably going to be more representative of what I want to do going forwards. So this backstage, for example, brings in some inside climbing for the leopard a bit of enrichment but also we are building an airlock so this backstage now makes more sense you can effectively lock the cat into one side of the habitat go about and clean the other or you could isolate them off if you wanted to introduce a mate so there's a lot more benefit to the way this is set out and i think really as we go forward and we start building backstages and more staff areas in all of our zoos i really want to start being a lot more add, adding a bit of sense i want to bring in a bit of well you do that for a reason rather than oh that looks pretty now, as always, to add a little bit of detail in, we're going to throw in a clipboard, we're going to throw in some switches for the doors, and we're also going to bring down our wonderful portcullis strips, which when we dye them yellow, will look like brilliant painted hazard stripes. And we're going to go crazy with them as well. With those done, we're just going to place down a couple of bits of straw so that the leopard has somewhere to sleep. And then we're going to bring in some of that climbing. So I'm going to make the top of the keeper area essentially accessible to the leopard. So we're going to build a little wooden climbing frame. Very simple, just a couple of climbing poles attached together as you would, nothing overly extravagant. And then on the very top of the mesh, we're going to put down a wooden platform just so if it chooses to, it can sleep up top. Now for our whole mess of ungulates, we're going to bring in just a normal stall type backstage. This area has a viewing window accessible via our walkthrough tunnel. So the idea is it needs to be a little bit more decorated up, a little bit more customer friendly. So we're going to build out just normal stalls and these will have straw in them as we have again many times before. And we're going to clad these little concrete walls in with some wooden cladding. That will soften them up, make them a little bit safer for the animals, but also visually add something just a little bit more distinct and adds a bit more colour as well. Now this area back to the right hand side will have some bars across it to stop them getting in and that's where we're going to put all of the straw and all the keepers tools etc and it's very much just going to be treated like a horse stable otherwise would so very similar setup very similar use and uh, the benefit of building in such a warm zoo is very rarely will they need to be inside to sleep they're actually going to be more inside for the shade and the shelter and as you can see here, we're making use of the brand new zookeeper poles. These are still, I think I mentioned this last episode, still a little bit thick for my liking. But, you know, we can't moan. We've probably got some useful bits, some uh, cables and the poles here. So uh, I'm not, I'm not going to complain too much, but they are, they are a little bit thick. I would have liked a thinner variant as well because they've got a wonderful metal texture. But look, they, I'm trying to use them as like gate toppers and stuff. They're all right. They're, they're, they're OK. They're probably not going to get used as much as the grasslands pole does. Let's put it that way. And then as we place down some straw for our animals, we're going to hop on over to our cinematics where we can have a look at how it all turned out.
Now, I know you're expecting me to come back and go, oh, look at it. I love it. It's brilliant. And it is. I. It's all right. It's okay. Like I said earlier, I got halfway through and got very demoralized with this whole habitat. I didn't feel like it was good enough. I looked back at the reference material. It was a little bit sad. It's it's good. It needs some tidying up. So as a as a habitat, it's brilliant and it works. And I'm I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the habitat. I think it's the surroundings. We need to start spending a bit more time making the surroundings of the habitat and the guest areas a lot more improved. I did a whole internal section for that walkthrough tunnel that I ended up deleting because I just didn't like it. And as you'll see as we go around here, it's missing its banners, it's missing its signs, it's missing its information, it's missing its education parts. I need to be better at that and that's certainly something that I'm taking away to make sure we improve upon. However, I would love to hear what you think. Did it work? Did it fail? It was fun to build and I wanted to try it so now I know. Let me know. Let me know in the comments below what you think. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, please tippy tap that like button. If you are not yet subscribed, ensure you subscribe and I will see you next time for something absolutely wonderful that I can't wait to show you. Stick around. I'll see you then. Goodbye.